still no word on a cure for the virus. Government officials report the virus is not airborne, but can be transferred through contact with blood. When you hit 30, weight loss seems so much harder. When I was in my mid-twenties, I could essentially out-train a bad diet. I mean, a lot of people say you can't, but I'm living proof. I lived off greasy spoon breakfast sandwiches, McDonald's, beer and kebabs. I mean, don't get me wrong, I had zero interest in fitness at that point, but my weight didn't fluctuate much at all. I stayed around the bottom end of overweight no matter what I ate. And as I got older, my diet and exercise regime didn't change, but my waistline definitely did. I mean, quite a lot of you will have seen the transformation video, and as you can see, I ended up massively overweight. There's quite a lot of contributing factors that cause this, and in this video, we are going to explore a few of them. But remember, it's never too late to start your fitness journey. It just takes a little bit more effort the older you get. So, first things first, your hormones, more specifically, testosterone. So we know in your late teens your testosterone levels spike. It peaks in your mid-twenties and then it slowly declines from that point onwards. As your testosterone level drops, so does your efficiency at building muscle, your insulin resistance and your libido. But don't get me wrong, it's not a one-size-fits-all. Some people will still be building muscle quite efficiently well into the 50s. I'm just generalising in a pretty big way here. For a lot of the bodybuilding community, TRT, which is testosterone replacement therapy, it's pretty common in your late to early 40s and well into your 50s. And it's for this exact reason. So let's jump into the insulin resistance for a quick second. An extremely brief summary of what this means is essentially your body's ability to process glucose. When we're younger, we convert glucose into energy extremely efficiently. But as we get older and our insulin resistance decreases, we slowly start to store that energy more. And that stored energy eventually leads to weight gain or an increase in body fat. So as you can see, testosterone plays a big part in how our body works. As we get older, our test levels drop and our bodies get less efficient. So in our 30s, we need to start looking at ways on how we can increase our testosterone. Now, there's loads of companies out there that will try and sell you tea boosters or testosterone boosters. And to be fair, 90% of them are absolute rubbish. And the ones that are backed up by studies is such a, a marginal increase is really not worth bothering. There's predominantly two things that will boost your testosterone. One of them is testosterone replacement therapy, which I'm no expert in. So if you want to go down that route, you're going to need to speak to your doctor. And the other one is lifting often and heavy. You often hear people talking about squats and deadlifts being the king of exercises. This is because they are massively taxing on the body. In fact, compound lifts are so intense that it triggers the release of testosterone and the human growth hormone in your body, which then triggers muscle growth, which is yet another reason to never skip leg day. I mean, to be honest, I've never had my testosterone levels checked. I'm half tempted to get one of those at home tests delivered and document the entire process. Let me know in the comments below if that's a video that you'd be interested in seeing. And also, let me know if you've done one of the at home testosterone tests yourself and what are your thoughts on them. Next, we move on to lifestyle. And again, I'm generalizing, so I don't want to offend anyone here. You live your life how you want to. My lifestyle changed massively from my early 20s into my 30s. A day in my 20s would usually consist of rolling out of bed and straight to work without eating breakfast. Then I would walk to work and work at that point was on building sites. So I'd then spend all day on my feet, climbing ladders, carrying toolboxes. I'd then come home, meet my friends. We'd either go for a game of football or we'd work on each other's cars. I'd be burning thousands of calories a day and pretty much living on sugar-free energy drinks and one or two big meals a day that weren't particularly healthy. You know, we were essentially the pioneers of intermittent fasting. Now, once I hit my mid-30s and before I made time for the gym, I essentially woke up in the morning, made breakfast for the family. We'd then sit down and eat breakfast together. I would then drive to work. I'd sit at my desk all day, eat my lunch at my desk, then jump in the car and drive back home. We'd then have two or three hours family time, which usually consisted of watching a bit of TV and then eating our dinner in front of the TV. And then we go to bed. So as you can see, plenty of calories eaten and not many burnt. But as we get older, a lot of people just have a lot less active lifestyle. And this plays into one of Kino Body's biggest cells, which is NEAT. 
NEAT stands for Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis. This is essentially how much you move throughout the day that is not directly linked to exercise. So, do you have a standing desk at work? Do you fidget a lot during meetings? When you're on a call, do you walk around in circles and do laps of the office? Do you work in a big office that has a long walk to your desk or a long walk from the car? All of this is classed as NEAT. You can burn thousands of calories a day through NEAT. A prime example, Last week, I was at a music festival. I consistently hit 15,000 steps every single day without even thinking about it. Again, as we get older, our NEAT tends to reduce because humans are inherently lazy. We'll park closer to the building, we'll buy a comfier chair so we can sit down for longer, and we'll queue for the lift as opposed to taking the stairs. What I do is always keep NEAT in the back of my mind. I purposely make life hard for my body. I once bought a four litre water bottle, which is a gallon to our American friends, because I drink a lot of water. I then realized I'm robbing myself of around 10 walks to the water fountain every day. So I went back to a smaller water bottle and now I do a lot more steps walking backwards and forwards to the water fountain. It might seem small, but everything adds up. And then last but not least, sleep. I don't know about you, but I get a lot less sleep now than I did when I was younger, especially at weekends. I mean, how often do you see teenagers stopping in bed all morning? You know, they don't come down into the kitchen until 11 o'clock in the morning. I mean, not only is sleep vital for us from a recovery point of view, you'll also notice that if you're not awake, you're not eating. You know, my daughter wakes me up at 5.30 in the morning, by seven o'clock, I am absolutely starving. Then three hours later, it's 10 a.m. and I want to eat again. I've already had two meals while the teenagers are still in bed. The teenagers morning doesn't start until 11 o'clock. Again, teenagers are the pioneers of intermittent fasting. Forget this guy. We cannot stop ourselves from getting older, but what we can do is understand how our bodies work and then try to compensate for it. See you next time. Bearded iron out.